Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to start with a new topic in our course or in our lecture series on solid mechanics or mechanics of materials, right? So in this particular lecture series, what we are going to learn are the different kinds of stresses and strains which can exist within structures subject to different kinds of loading. You will see in the later chapters or in the later topics that we will cover that when structures are in, are induced uh, to different kinds of loads different or different structures have different kinds of loadings on them you have all these different types of stresses which may arise as a consequence of these loadings right now depending on the load or depending on on the particular structure you may have you know these loadings occurring in different proportions analogically it may be said it is very similar to maybe uh, going to your kitchen and then learning the different ingredients which make up a particular recipe for example if you take a look into your kitchen you'll probably have the very similar ingredients like for example you can have turmeric you can have red chili powder you will probably have coriander cumin powder and so on and so forth now suppose if you are making a recipe x it requires a particular proportion of these different uh, spices if you're cooking a recipe y it requires different proportions of the same set of spices right Similarly, in structures, as I said, a particular set of loading on a particular structure will induce different kinds of stresses of the same building blocks. You will have, may have tension, you may have compression, you may have shear, you may have bearing stresses, right, which we are going to learn about. Now, if you have another structure and another type of loading or the same structure with a different type of loading, you will again have these kinds of stresses, but maybe just in different proportions, right. So, let us go ahead and get started. For example, uh, this is what you see on your on your screen is uh, a person who is in the gym and doing exercise right now here uh, if you take a look at this that you can you can understand that this is an entire system that you're looking at now if you're taking look taking a look at a particular system and if suppose if you are uh, breaking this particular system into the different components so if this is that overall system which you're looking at right and if you take a different uh, small portion of the system and if you take a small element in this particular portion you will see that that element has the different kinds of stresses which are going on over here right now remember in our last topic when we were uh, talking about the introduction to the course introduction to solid mechanics what we had discussed that the overall deformation of any body essentially comprises of the deformation of these smaller tiny segments which are there for example, if I have this particular sponge, again, the overall deformation of this entire sponge depends upon the individual deformations of the building blocks of this particular sponge, which in this particular example, you can probably guess as these boxes which are over here, right? So, each of deformation of each of these boxes gives the final deformed shape of this particular sponge. Similarly, coming back to our example, the overall behavior and the overall deformation of this entire system of how this entire system behaves is going to be dictated by the smaller building blocks which are there, right? Now, uh, if we take a look at this particular element over here, uh, what are the different types of forces or the stresses which are acting on this particular element, right? So, we can take, we can consider this also maybe quote unquote a system and we can probably discretize it even further. For example, this particular building block is undergoing some kind of normal stresses over here and from the action of the stresses you can tell that it is going to stretch over here if the, these forces could be acting vertically down as well in which case you will have a compression right and on these faces over here you have the shear you have the shear forces which are also acting and as a result of this you will have some change of angles in between the uh, planes which are perpendicular they are probably going into an oblique angle right now right so we have the normal stresses and the shear stresses right and also in addition to this there is a particular type of stress which is known as the uh, bearing stress so if you take a look at the bearing stress a bearing stresses usually result uh, usually uh, result from the from the contact so you know for example this particular place over here so along this maybe entire uh, bar the place where you are touching right so what you're essentially doing you're doing a contact stress you know, this is the, like a contact so you're having this is the bar this is the this is the palm of the hand you're having some kind of contact stress we'll learn more about the bearing stresses later but most importantly there are three kinds of stresses that we learned until now normal shear and the bearing stresses which are there right now the rest of the topics in this particular uh, 
or rather the rest of the subtopics in this particular uh, under this particular topic which will be divided into normal stresses shear stresses and bearing stresses right? so first we are going to take a look at the normal stresses which are essentially the tensile of the compressive stresses so the tensile and the compressive stresses together can be clubbed into the normal stresses right now can you from your uh, back in the day from engineering mechanics or uh, structures which you normally see or normally heard of or maybe solve some problems can you give an example of a structure where uh, the members of the structure are primarily subjected to only normal stresses that is only tension and compression nothing else no bending there is no bending in the structure only tension and compression right can you maybe take a few moments to think about it maybe some of you got it right one classic example of this are trusses right so if you remember that when you had solved truss problems in truss problems you take every individual member you solve the equilibrium equations and eventually what you get are the normal stresses which are or the normal forces right you haven't studied stresses yet the normal forces which are acting in these individual members right what may be some of the other kinds of structures which are subjected to just normal or maybe primarily normal forces right uh, for example the building where you are in where you are probably watching this video right now if the columns the columns of the building are classic examples which are subjected to normal stresses right as you can see in the figure over here this is a bridge column which is subject where on top of the bridge the vehicle goes and this one takes the normal loads and transmits it to the foundation or the footing over here right uh, these are the columns in the mumbai terminal to international airport these beautifully flared columns that you have but it serves the same purpose of essentially transmitting uh, a large amount of the normal stresses coming from the top all the way to the ground over here right now some more complicated examples which you uh, probably have seen or maybe have overlooked next time you take a flight you see that uh, you, the, the, uh, the, the, the 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 whole aeroplane has you know different kinds of uh, equipment of which you have this landing gear over here and you may also have a tow bar which essentially tows the uh, your your aeroplane back into the hangar right now if you take a look at any of these elements as well so the tow bar is essentially pulling you will take a look at any of these elements as well there is this normal stresses or the normal forces which are going on so if we again remember that as we had discussed what we are very good doing at uh, doing as civil engineers are that taking a real life example and making an idealization of that one trying to solve that and then applying it back to the real system right so for any of these structures that you are looking at and if you are studying about normal stresses they can maybe simply be represented as something like this right you have a prismatic bar prismatic meaning the cross section of the bar remains the same along the length of the bar right uh, so for a prismatic bar subjected to two loads p and p at the either end right so this is a classic example of uh, of, a, of a bar under uh, normal loads or actual tension or compression right so let's maybe you know dig a little bit more further into this so what you essentially see is that you have a prismatic bar so maybe here i will write uh, prismatic meaning that your uh, cross section is same along the length right so that is the meaning of meaning of prismatic so you have a prismatic bar of a particular length l right and to this what i am doing is that i am applying two loads p and p it has to be in equilibrium right so if one end you are applying a force p the other end automatically you have to apply the force p or if one end remember our last example if one end is clamped if i pull it with a force p i will feel a pull with a force p here as well right now so in this particular uh, example once you start you know pulling with a force p over here your bar is going to expand right so you're going to see something like this over here so what was originally l has now become l plus delta over here right now if within this bar if you take a particular cross section mn and if you maybe if you draw the free body diagram of this particular part over here right if i chop off this particular bar about this particular cross section mn what you're going to see is something like this now remember this is very important that 
uh, previously in when we had learned statics you were drawing the free body diagram of the entire structure because the entire structure was in equilibrium you drew the free body diagram solved for the forces now remember that within the body also it is in equilibrium right for instance this bar over here which you're looking at when you are applying this force p and force p it is simply going an expansion but the bar by itself is in equilibrium so every segment of the bar is in equilibrium as well so if i am chopping off a particular portion and if i'm only considering this left end over here this has a force p right so consequently to balance that out i must have a force p on the other side as well right now if you take a look at this particular cross section this force p over here induces something which is known as stress which is a normal stress as you can see over here right so this normal stress so in another way to explain that that even if i am pulling with the point forces over here right at every cross section it is undergoing the same amount of force but that force is sort of smeared across the whole cross section although i'm applying maybe a point load here at a particular cross section every material every bit of the sponge is resisting that particular load p right so this particular load p essentially induces uh, some amount of stresses across the entire cross section and that stress is known as this normal stress over here right which is the axial load divided by the cross-sectional area so in this particular case if my cross-sectional area of this one is a, a let me call this as area right right so this is going to be equal to p divided by the cross-sectional area a right but remember that it has little bit of assumptions now what are the assumptions so what, what did we do when we, we wrote it as p divided by a it is essentially i am just calculating the total load divided by the total area in an average sense right now if you again take a look at this one and i want you to observe very closely if i'm taking this and i'm pulling it look at these vertical lines at the ends and look at the vertical lines at the center if you take a look at the vertical lines at the end you will see they're having a kind of a curvature whereas the lines at the center stays more or less the same stays more or less straight right so what it essentially means is that when i'm applying these point loads at the end i'm having some concentration of stresses over here concentration of stresses over here and as i am moving farther away from the point of application of the load that is near the center the stress is more or less stabilized and that and this formula of sigma equals to p divided by a can be easily applied we will come back to this later there is a particular concept or particular principle known as saint venon's principle which deals with this but for the time being let's just be aware of this assumption that if you're taking a look at this particular bar as you saw in this example as well that towards the end where you have the points of application of the load the stresses need not be average need not be uniform you cannot simply probably take the total p and divide it by the total a but as you are moving away from this point of application of the load this becomes more and more applicable over here right so in this particular example we studied or in this particular uh, slide we studied this thing called the normal stress right now what did we see when we apply the stress what was originally l becomes l plus delta so there is an elongation now in addition to stress comes its friend which is the strain right so coming back to here again going back to the same example after pulling it with p i have this l plus delta over here right so that leads to another quantity which is known as the normal strain what we saw in the previous page was normal stress this is normal strain which is the change in length divided by original length so this is simply going to be my final length is l plus delta minus l which is the original length Div, uh, yeah that is our change in length the numerator and the denominator is original length l so which is going to be equals to simply delta divided by l over here right so normal stress the average normal stress uh, uh, the quote unquote average normal stress is p divided by a and the normal strain is delta that is the change in length divided by the original length l right now you are probably thinking that whenever there is a stress there must be a strain and they must all go hand in hand but you will see that later we'll talk about some examples where sometimes they can coexist without each other as well 
right so let's move on to one particular axiom or one particular uh, theory which is there that if you have let me just bring it up quickly so what this theory says is that uh, if you have a uniform stress distribution remember that is p divided by a then the line of action of the force that is the line of action of this particular force p must pass to the centroid of the cross section so what it essentially means is that let, let's take a look at the figure and try to understand is that you have a particular cross section over here you have applied a particular load p right this may, you may imagine as that internal cross section mn right so internal cross section after applying the load every small bit of that cross section is undergoing that p divided by a stress right which is this particular guy over here right so uh, so what it says now these arrows don't be misled by them these arrows are not acting only at the edges it is acting throughout the entire cross section over here right so if i am uh, looking you know from the front and this is the, the the 2d representation of the cross section so essentially let me maybe change the color of my pen uh yeah so this cross section is essentially the same one over here right and this p uh, the point where it acts over here uh, oops sorry yeah this point where it acts over here this particular point is this particular point p1 over here so let me maybe mark that one as well so this particular point is p1 right so what it says is that that if the stress distribution has to be uniform so for uniform stress distribution this is the condition you have to satisfy so for a uniform stress distribution the line of action of this force must pass through the center of the cross section now there is a very easy proof to this one right so what i can do so for example if i am just focusing on this particular uh, force p over here so for p what i uh, can write maybe so for right if i am calc if i am writing the expression for the moment about my x axis right you have this force p which is acting out of this plane of the video you are looking at right if i am taking the moment of the force of this particular force p about this particular axis x over here it is simply going to be the force uh, p times this particular distance y bar and if you remember your right hand rule for the moment it is going to curl your thumb is going to curl towards a positive direction so m of x is going to be this particular force p times oh uh, sorry not y it is going to be y bar right similarly m of y is going to be what it is going to be again you are taking this particular force p over here it is going to be times this x bar but remember this time your thumb curls vertically down if you are going by the right hand rule of the moment it is going to be minus of p times x bar right so this is for p this is for you know this particular uh, p which we looked at right now if i try to write the same set of equations uh, in terms of maybe the sigma over here remember which is the average stress throughout right and if i am focusing on a particular uh, area a small area in infinitesimally small area da so maybe we can write as for sigma right how do i write the expression for m of x it is going to be the integral remember over this particular area da if my average stress is sigma what is the force force is always stress times the area so over this infinitesimally small area da the force which is coming is sigma times da right and i am taking the moment about the x-axis my distance is this y over here so times y similarly your m of y the moment about the y axis must be minus of uh, the minus sign is for the same reason that your 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 uh, right your thumb for your right hand points vertically down when you're taking the moment about your y axis right is going to be minus of same sigma da which is the force times x oh sorry times x over here right now technically this and this is the same because your section is in equilibrium so this quantity it must be equal to this quantity over here so if i have to kind of take both of these two together p 
of sorry my p of y bar must be equal to integral of sigma y da right similarly my p of x bar uh, the negative sign goes for a toss must be equal to integral of sigma x da right now remember that p is nothing but uh, if you take a look at this expression over here this particular p is nothing but sigma times a so if we replace so this essentially means your sigma times a times y bar since sigma is a constant that is a normal stress which is acting the same as throughout the cross section i can make this uh, come out of the integral that is sigma integral of y da right similarly this becomes sigma times a x bar is equal to sigma integral of x t over here right so this thing and this thing cancels this thing and this thing cancels over here so what you essentially uh, get is that your y bar is integral of y da divided by a right and similarly your x bar is integral of x da divided by a right and these expressions if you remember right both of these guys over here are simply nothing but the way that you compute the centroid so these are the expressions for the centroids right so this proves this particular uh, you know axiom which we were trying to prove that for a uniform stress distribution the line of action of the force must pass through the centroid of this particular cross section right now that we have at least some concepts about the normal stresses next we are going to look at a particular problem example